And what I wanted to show you is in the booklet, I, at the end of the booklet, wherever my booklet is, because I'm revising again, at the end, at the last page, on the inside, you have a few videos that you can scan, and one of them, the top row, one of them is an anatomy muscle cadaver videos. You see that one? Yeah. Any, anybody see that one? Yes. And if you go to the muscle cadaver videos, what you get to is you get to a list on top that, that has a list that, that shows all the muscles that have what names they have, because then I have these names. And like, for example, I named them uh, axial skeleton scaling muscle and so forth. And what we're doing now, we're going into the, this is lower extremity, LE is lower extremity, and UE is upper extremity. And I thought, you know, especially now that you're, you're at home studying, maybe you want to have a little bit more material. And this is more material, so I thought, let me, let me look at this. So today we're going to, the first muscle we're going to talk about is going to be the biceps brachii. See right here, biceps brachii. Uh, one of the most likely. And then when you click on that, it goes to a, it goes to a cadaver video that is kind of boring. Yeah. But it's like mm -hmm. a one-minute video yeah. or so that describes... I hope my computer is not going to crash. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But I've all the biceps muscle. It's full name. See, it describes it with a lies cadaver. In front of the brachialis. It's a more complicated muscle. And start. that can be very, very helpful if you study. And a short. If you can um, tolerate that. Let's take away the anterior third of the deltoid muscle. You see that? And also pectoralis major. Yep. That makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. So, oh, yeah. Right. So that's something that I thought maybe um, I I point out that I've done actually for myself to understand it as well as possible, but I thought might be helpful to just do it's more for you know it's more for by too. It could be a little bit overwhelming, but maybe you know some of you might be interested in that level of detail. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out is here. I have a chart that I put up. I show you what I put that up. I put it up on, her, I think, on her upper extremities. Because I list all the muscles that we're talking about, and I list their origin, their insertion, and their action in a, in a list format, in a table format. And so I'm kind of trying to consolidate all the information. So when you study for it, and you want to go to that level of detail, then you have it right here consolidated and it more or less, you know, is, is complete, but I'm trying to make it not too complicated, but keep it, you know, sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, when you go to the detailed anatomy books, it gets very complicated when they describe these muscle attachments and stuff like that. So I wanted to consolidate all the stuff here. I did this for myself originally, but then I used it for a bio two class. And then I started just using it in all the classes. And last but not least, to completely overwhelm you, I created this thing and I put that up in the booklet as well. Under the muscle chart is right here on the bottom. And then the last one is my favorite muscle picture and that's right here. And that gets you to this one here, what you're seeing. And that shows you all the muscles that you want to know. It's great for having it be an online thing because you can zoom into it. And it shows you all the muscles that we're ever going to talk about. Like over here, we oh, see, we talk about the trapezius. And it shows you the attachments and it shows you how the muscle fibers go. And if you go deeper in studying muscles, this is very helpful to um, 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 keep you oriented um, and it's just, you know, it was very, it's been very useful for me to analyze when I get problems with patients, like where the muscle hurt and so forth. And so I put that up as well. If you want to go deeper in that, you know, studies of such, and you can access these later on. I'm, I'm intending to keep these up for as long as I can. And when you go to another class, you know, in case you go deeper in the study, don't, you know, just actually panic. You don't have that level of detail need right now. All right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not boring you yet? Yep. Good. Well, if I am, let me know. <laughs> we'll make so put some music on or something. All right, let's see. Let's now focus on the motion of the elbow. Act, um, if nobody has another question, if you do, just reach out. Uh, the elbow mainly bends and then straightens back out. There are many muscles that help in bending that motion. Can you name two of the main ones? Brachialis. No, no, no. Is it? Wait. Yes, um, brachialis. Uh huh. Brachiodorales. I don't know. I don't know. This one. Biceps brachia. Okay. So yeah, the the coracle, you know, actually a good. It's a good. It's actually maybe I should revise that question. There is because the brachialis. The, no, the biceps brachial is right here. So the biceps brachial is attached <clears throat> to the coracoid process and then into the uh, glenoid cavity right here at the top, and it goes to the forearm, both the radius and a little bit the ulna as well, and it basically flexes the elbow, it bends the elbow. It does also supination, so it brings the palm upward. Supination brings the palm upward. It does a little bit of that too. When you think of where it's attached here, or actually down here at the, at the radial tuberosity, and it <coughs> rotates it back when it brings it out. But it, that's hard to see when we don't have a model. But I, I, put, I showed that in this picture here, if you can visualize yeah. it. A little bit. And so that's the main one. And then the brachialis is the other. The brachialis is really a strong one um, in many ways because it's, it's fat and it's underlying the bicep brachii. And it goes from mid-shaft down to the ulna. And then it basically only just really flexes the elbow joint and bends it. Um, when you look at the coracle brachialis, that's the other one. And that it's actually the answer is i got to revise that a little bit. What question number is that? Number 10, right? 10, yeah. Yeah, that one it showed as incorrect for me. Huh? It showed, I believe it showed the answer is incorrect when I picked those ones. When you it picked incorrect the brachialis and brachialis and the, and the brachialis? I think so. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it did. Okay, I'm going to review that uh, because I think that if you actually, you know, the... the um, uh, well, no, actually, no, no, now that I see it, I'm actually wrong. Because if you look at the coral core brachialis, that doesn't flex the elbow. The elbow is down here. It, it flexes the arm itself. That's what I thought. Okay, there you go. You guys, you know, I should have reviewed that a little bit more. So the brachialis and the biceps brachial are the correct answers. The coral core brachialis uh, 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 flexes or brings the arm up, not flexes the elbow. doesn't bring the forearm up. And then the pronator teres... We're going to get to that. That brings the forearm down. That pronates the hand. So you, you, you remember the, the, the pronation and the pronation. Remember that? Mm, yeah. Palm up and palm down. And so we'll get to that. Let's, let's keep going here. Uh, we'll get to that, I'm sure. And then there is one main muscle that strains the elbow out, which is extension. What is that one called? That's the brachial dorsal alis. Um, no. I think it, I had the triceps brachii. Triceps brachii, yes. Okay. The brachial radialis, who's in it? That's a really cool muscle. We're going to talk about that. That's, That's the, what it makes. Huh? That just makes it. Doesn't it have a part of making it bend? Or it's, I know it's just like where you get your veins picked up. Like, you know what? Well, oh, yes. The brachial radialis so does, does it do? bend it. Doesn't it also assist in bending? What is it there for? Play volleyball? I'm being sarcastic. Well, the but, brachial radialis? Yeah. No, it's there to give you a tennis elbow. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to have a problem with it, then, you know, it is. But it's not that the, the, what I was talking about is the – let's do that real quick. The, the, where is that? The triceps – Brachia okay. is the one in the back that extends the arm out. So it really it extends the arm out. The brachioradialis is still a forearm muscle, so it partly helps bend the elbow. It doesn't straighten it out. Okay, it helps bend. But it, it's really interesting because it's not, you know, most of them are attached up here somewhere, and this one is attached at the bottom, right by the elbow, and it reaches all the way to the front, almost to the wrist. 
And so it sort of helps, you know, when you lift a, a, a grocery bag up and you kind of really hold it up with your wrist as much as you can, like hold something up like that. That's when it's really used. And that's a function that is used in tennis a lot. And that's why when there is a pain at that lateral elbow, they call that tennis elbow. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I get it out with people, you know, I, sometimes, you know, I can work the bone and I can work the muscle and the muscle, I use a trigger point and then that helps the pain in here or even in here by the thumb. So that's, mm -hmm. that's it. So the break your radialis in, in your thinking in the head, you want to put that together with brachialis. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So you've got brachialis that's right here from here downward. And then you got the brachial radialis that's attached at that point further down and goes all the way down to the forearm. So it's an interesting one. It's a very interesting muscle. Thank you. I know. I'm sorry. I get a little off track here. I like this stuff. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I bore you too much, you let me know. <laughs> well, you know, that's why I teach it, right? You got to love it. Otherwise, never mind. All right, uh, let's see. So we got the straightening out. So we go with that. The wrist motion are produced before. Many of the, of the anterior forearm muscles attached to the distal humerus on the inside, which is the medial epicondyle. Remember that from, an, uh, from, the, muscle, from the bones? Right here. You can feel it when you, you put your arm in. That's the medial epicondyle right here. Um, and then there, the, me the muscles for that move the forearm or move the wrist, that go down in the front like that. And then those muscles that go in the front, they, ex they flex the wrist like that. They bring the wrist closer to us. And um, one of them actually crosses the upper forearm and then pulls the radius across the ulna, which makes us give us pronation. So most of them that attach here and reach forward to the wrist, they flex the wrist. Some of them, one in particular here on top, that goes all the way from the medial epicondyle and crosses right over, it actually it pronates the wrist. It doesn't flex the wrist because it doesn't go all the way to the wrist, but it brings the radius over the ulna and it pronates the wrist. So what's that muscle called? Pronated teres. Pronated teres, perfect. Do you guys understand that? Let me show you the picture. There you go. Oh, wait, I'm waiting. Uh-oh, too fast here. Pronate attaches right there. So it attaches at the medial epicondyle. That's the other side of me. No, it's right here. That's right here at the medial epicondyle, and then it crosses over, and that you can see that right here, and it crosses over, and it brings the radius over the ulna to turn the palm down, and that's pronation. All right, good. Got that? Otherwise, I'll keep going. If you don't have questions, I'll keep going. Uh, now, look at the names of the other muscles in the front that flex the wrist. They are quite descriptive. Did you look at those so far? Yeah. They got those weird names, huh? Um, <laughs> the word flexor describes the motion of what they do. So they... They, their names are flexor, carpi, something, right? Mm -hmm. Flexor means you flex the wrist. That's this flexion. It's this motion. You bring the – you this angle that's 180 degrees, you close the angle. That's flexion. And so that's the name flexion. So a lot of these muscles here are named flexor, flexor something. Um, and then carpi are the carpals. They're the bones right here. That's where they insert. And then the third word makes – uh, the third word that makes up those muscles indicates it travels along the radius or the ulna. Is that true or false? True. Yes. Good. That is true. So here are all those muscles. So you have one that's called flexor carpi ulnaris, and then you have one that's called flexor carpi radialis. So flexor, flexor is the motion. Carpi is where they go in, and then ulnaris means it goes along the ulna, which goes into the pinky, and 
radialis means it goes along the radius, which means it goes into the thumb. Mm. All right? And when we're in class and I have a model in front of me, I actually got this, um, you can see this picture right here, where it, where it shows you all the forearm muscles that I want you to know. Uh, and what you do is you, you, take your, you take your arm and you stick, you stick your, your, your um, thumb area into the, into the medial epicondyle and your fingers lay on top of the forearm and you see the four muscles that I want you to know on the list. And they are the flexor, uh, the, the pronator teres, which we talked about, and then the flexor carpi radialis, and then the flexor carpi ulnaris. And in the middle, we got one sliver muscle that's known as the palmaris longus. And, you know, just label that. Let me see here if I see it. See the palmaris longus is right here. And that goes into the palm. That's why it's called the palmaris longus. And it's a muscle that sort of flexes the palm as a whole. It's not that strong. And it's not on everybody. Not everybody has it. Um, but it's on there on the list uh, in your term list. And so if you find it on, on the muscle chart thing, uh, the labeling exercise, uh, label it on there, okay? So wait, you mean it's not on everybody for our paper? No, 10% of the people don't have that muscle. Huh? That's weird. Yeah, it's interesting, right? So I have the pronator test, but I don't even think... I see it here. There's the palmaris longus. And it goes from the same place, and it goes to the flexor retinaculum, they call that. So it's those three What is that muscle doing? Yeah, you can... You can if you if you have it, let's see if I could see it. If you, if you do if you do this with your wrist and you pull it, you have this tendon that sticks out here on top. You got if a you tendon that sticks out. If you have that tendon, you have that muscle because that's that muscle. Got it. It's kind of a weak flexor, but it flexes the whole thing. And it helps everything. So you know the mo the the big flexes are if you if you bend your wrist and you bend it more towards your thumb you you use the flexor carpi radialis a lot and if you bend it more towards your pinky you use the flexor carpi ulnaris more and most likely use all of them to help whatever you're doing with the wrist um because then the other side what we have is the extensors and let's see that's probably the last question here look at that it's gonna be a short class huh? looking at the back of the forearm one of the superficial muscles that reaches all the way to the fingertips and what is that called? Insert digits. Finger, carpi. Fingertip. Extensor digitorum. Or digitorum. Digitorum. Extensor digitorum. Oh, I got that one. So fingertips is, yeah, let me know if I made a mistake on the quiz. But uh, fi fi so that's why I mentioned fingertips. So in the back end, if you think about inflection, we're pretty strong with flexion. You've got to hold your grocery bags and all kind of stuff that way. Extension, you don't need to hold that much that way. So it's not enough to be that strong on this side. So we have less developed muscles on that side. Um, <clears throat> so we have extensor carpi muscles. Again, one on the ulnar side and one on the radial side. And then we also have an extensor digitorum. So the extensor carpies go to the carpals, which are here, right here. The carpals are, you know, where the wrist bends, basically. And they extend the wrist, and then the extensor digitorum is this top one, and it goes all the way down and reaches all the way to the tip of the fingers. And so if you extend the fingers, you curl, you straighten the fingers out, that's the muscle that you're using. And so that's the muscle that I was looking for here because it goes to the fingertips. Does that make sense, those differentials? Yes. Oh, those differentials. Good. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, from a material perspective, that's all I want to cover today. <laughs>